This is time for a closer look. Jokes and celebs are a staple of late night talk shows, but it's the recurring bits that keep us hooked. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 recurring segments from late night talk shows. Hey, Steven. Yeah. Yeah, Jen. go back in time. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at segments that have helped define the late night shows they appear on or appeared on. Look at this scientific chart. Mars, no air. Earth, air. We're not limiting ourselves to segments from shows currently on the air, giving the classic segments a chance to shine as well. I check my inbox. I return some emails. And of course, I send out my thank you notes. Number 10, Clueless Gamer, Conan. Let's go play tennis. Can you play tennis? No. Competent video game reviewing is a skill that is honed over time, and it's one that Conan O'Brien clearly has no intention of mastering. But then, that's the point of this segment. It's a chance for experienced gamers and novices alike to learn about the latest releases through the eyes and subpar playing skills of a clueless, middle-aged talk show host. I have not checked the internet, but my assumption is that sales are almost non-existent because everyone's waiting to hear my review. While it's fun enough to watch as Coco stumbles his way through the latest hot game, the subtext of this recurring segment is that it's okay to be bad at video games and just enjoy playing them. Mother, quiet! I'm downloading General Zod! <laughs> Number nine, Chaos on Bullshit Mountain. The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Triggered something I like to call chaos! On Bullshit Mountain! <laughs> During Jon Stewart's 16-year tenure as host, The Daily Show took on a life of its own, blurring the lines between satire and news, and critiquing not only the newsmakers, but also those responsible for reporting on them. Fox News was a regular Stewart target. So regular, in fact, that he turned his hilarious and brutal takedowns of the right-leaning cable channel and its hosts into a recurring segment called Chaos on Bullshit Mountain. This is what brings us back to not optimal and how bull Mountain works its magic. In it, Stewart challenged the hyperbolic rhetoric and hypocritical stances Fox spewed out with his singular sarcastic wit and crafty, snarky editing. Spend more time with the family. Let somebody else pay for your health care. Yeah, spend time with your family. Help raise your children in a more hands-on fashion. <laughs> Create stability. <laughs> what the hell? You're conservatives. I thought you guys loved family. Number eight, and now this. Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. And now, this. John Oliver has shaken up the talk show world with his long-form approach to political comedy. But between his exposés and recaps of the week's funniest events is, and now, this. A quick segment that generally features a series of clips from the news on a single theme such as CBS This Morning's Awkward Sex Talk, an unimpressed CNN weatherman, and the C-SPAN host dubbed the most patient man in television. Obama's a Muslim, and that's all I gotta say. Obama is not a Muslim, but thank you for making your comment. Sometimes, his bit takes the form of, why is this still a thing? With the show's announcer asking why things like Hollywood whitewashing, Columbus Day, and Daylight Savings are still relevant today. Essentially, it's Oliver condensed down to his most potent form. Daylight Saving Time. How is this still a thing? Number seven. That's all we've got time for, aka The Red Chair. The Graham Norton Show. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? My name's Anita. Graham Norton likes to end his shows by giving a few members of his studio audience a chance to speak, albeit sometimes briefly, very briefly. I live in Manchester and it's my birthday today. Oh. <laughs> audience members are invited to sit in a red chair and tell a story to Norton and his celebrity guests. But if the host gets bored or if he just feels like it, he can pull a lever that tips the chair and its occupant over. I'm a theater director and I think the theater scene here is much more stimulating than in New York, to be honest. Who knew? <laughs> it's always fun to try and guess whose story will survive and whose will be rejected, as well as what role, if any, Norton's guests will play in the decision. Plus, some of the stories told are downright hilarious. Number six, Karnak the Magnificent, The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. <laughs> Attention Kmart shoppers. When most people hear the name Johnny Carson, two images come to mind. The legendary host chasing a joke by swinging a fake golf club and him wearing a cape and fortune teller's hat. Snoopy and Woodstock. Snoopy and Woodstock. 
Who's running the state of California while Jerry Brown is out campaigning for president? <laughs> the latter is from Carson's most well-known segment, Karnak the Magnificent, where he would divine answers to questions sealed in envelopes he would then open to reveal the punchline. UCLA. UCLA. <laughs> what happens when there isn't any smog? The bit was a regular part of Carson's Tonight Show from 1964 right up until he signed off in the early 90s. While some of the humor was topical, the segment itself remains timeless. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. If it keeps raining, who will be patrolling California's highways? Number five, Carpool Karaoke, the late, late show with James Corden. Do you mind if we listen to some music? No. That'd be okay. That's totally I don't know what's fine. on it. It's a segment that traces its origins back to when James Corden was a comedian in Britain and was taking part in a comic relief bit with the late, great George Michael. Baby, I'm your I love it. Since bringing it to his US talk show, Lady Gaga, Stevie Wonder, Adele, and others have gleefully belted out their hits with Corden as he drove them to wherever they were going. Even Madonna was willing to do a little carpool karaoke. Come on, folks. One of the most memorable segments happened just before Corden hosted the Tonys when he crammed several Broadway stars into his car to sing with him. 525,600 minutes. This segment became so popular, it even spun off its own show on Apple Music in 2017. This is how we get it done. This, this, this is carpool karaoke. Number four, the word word. The Colbert Report and The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And that brings us to tonight's word. It was one of the most definitive bits of The Colbert Report, and the only one that made its way to The Late Show when Stephen Colbert took over hosting duties from David Letterman. People who don't support Trump feel like the world has gone crazy. Well, get in line. Because the people who do support Trump have felt that way ever since the manufacturing jobs started going to China. And we can tell why. Colbert's dry, comedic delivery of facts on a particular topic is juxtaposed brilliantly with written, on-screen punchlines that give voice to what everyone at home is thinking. Here's the thing. Repeal without replace could cause political backlash because under Obamacare, 20 million people have gotten health insurance, over 6 million of whom are Trump's core supporters. It's no wonder a legal challenge from Colbert's former network couldn't derail this insightful, fast-punching bit of political comedy when he revived it as the word on his new show. The polls show that many of us have already chosen the outcome we really want. Number three, Lip Sync Battle, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. My first song is from a little lady named Iggy Azalea. And the title is Fancy. Not every movie star can sing, but it's a safe bet that most of them can act like they can. Jimmy Fallon, an energetic performer in his own right, took that bet and turned it into one of the most popular segments in modern late night. The Tonight Show host has put his moves and mouthing style to the test against the likes of Melissa McCarthy, Tom Cruise, and Emma Stone, to name a few. The bit was even popular enough to inspire a whole show of its own, hosted by LL Cool J and Chrissy Teigen. Number two, Mean Tweets, Jimmy Kimmel Live. I can't stand this new Ed Sheeran. Like, why the f*** are you happy on your records? You're f***ing ginger for f***'s sake. Be sad. What do Ed Sheeran, Kate Hudson, and Barack Obama have in common? Barack Obama is the nickelback of presidents. They've all taken part in this recurring Jimmy Kimmel segment. The bit only seems to grow in popularity year after year, and it's easy to understand why. Who does this? Who, who are you? Who are you? Are you some little 15-year-old nothing your life. Where else can you see Robert De Niro swearing at some random dude, or Brian Cranston doing his best impression of Jim Carrey impersonating Matthew McConaughey? All right, all right, all righty then. The best part is that the tweets are real, and generally from unknown people who are unexpectedly getting their 15 seconds of fame. Barack Obama dances like how his jeans look. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Thank you. Little girl who interrupted her dad's BBC interview for letting us know what it would look like if minions were real. And finally, new rule tomorrow in honor of Earth Day. Everyone has to shut up about Mars. Go, Michael Jordan, meme, go! Number one, the top 10 list slash late show top 10 list. 
Late Night with David Letterman, and The Late Show with David Letterman. Top 10 hockey penalties and new car options. It's clear that we at WatchMojo love a top 10 list, but so did millions of late night viewers throughout David Letterman's long run on the air. I spent all night caressing your receipts. <laughs> this iconic bit was a nightly part of both of Dave's shows, Late Night and Late Show, spanning two networks and three decades. Top 10 words that almost rhyme with peas. From the very first list Dave read in 1985, top 10 things that almost rhyme with peas, to later topics read by celebrities and other guests like top 10 things that sound cool when said by Snoop Dogg. In the words of Ernie Anastas, keep plucking that chick. <laughs> to top 10 things that sound creepy when said by John Malkovich. They were always irreverent, original, and hilarious. And the number one reason Puerto Rico does not want to become a state, two words, Lorena Bobbitt, there you go. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.